What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Elliot Delp. Sparky. Back again like you never left. And today we're gonna to be doing another builds video. This time on a high-end night vision build. We did we did a budget one a few months back. Yeah, a while back. You actually that was one of the last videos Sparky wasn't in. What was that oh, one? No wonder I don't remember that one. But uh we're gonna be doing a high high-end night vision build. We're gonna be talking about everything in detail, why we chose what we chose, how will we maybe improve it in the future, mm -hmm. if we could improve it in the future, and then kind of the concept of it. Before we dive right into all of that, big thank you to Basement Operator Company. New merch. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Shoes. Do not go gentle into that good night. We're doing a lot of night vision stuff here on the channel, and we're gonna be talking about a lot of things, so we have some night vision themed merch. So go check us out at basementoperator.com. Don't buy one, buy two. Buy two, yeah. Let's dive right into this. This is the higher end night vision build. Dedicated. You could obviously go way more expensive than this. Uh, night vision is one of those uh, topics that you can always just keep spending money, keep spending money. Keep you can spending. buy the Amazon eh stuff, or you can buy the high end stuff. You know, when we're talking about night vision, high end stuff, can reach thousands and thousands. Yeah, and like thousands. this is barely getting your toes wet. On yeah, but this is end, nicer so. stuff. Oh yeah. yeah so sure. we we have this build kind of set up as kind of like a baseline of you know where you would want to go in, if you didn't want to go like super super cheap options. You want to get in a slightly more serious. Yeah, a more serious build. So this is a higher end build, um, and we'll give you a total price at the end of the video so you know. The, the cumulative amount we're, we're talking here. But let's start with the base of this mm -hmm. because, you know, that's important. The rifle. The rifle. Okay, so this is the American Defense uh, 223 Wild Rifle. We actually had it back on the channel while back. a while back, a month or so ago. We told you then that it was going to be kind of a build esque video or a be based for a build. Mm -hmm. uh, but the American Defense is a fantastic rifle. The thing MSRPs for, I think, $2,200. Yeah. And then, you know, once you get shipping, tax stamp, or not tax stamp, but uh, transfer, transfer fee, fee you're sitting at 2300-ish. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of awesome things about this rifle and we'll brief over them. If you want to watch the full in-depth review of the American Defense, it's, it's on the channel, so you can go check it out. But essentially you have a 16 inch 223 wild barrel on this one. Uh, we really like rail space for night vision setups. I'm not an awful big stickler on a 16 inch versus a 14.5 versus a 10 and a half, whatever works best for you. I think 16. Yeah, whatever, whatever fits your application. Yeah, whatever fits your, your shooting style and whatnot. But it has a, an awesome barrel, the mm -hmm. Centurion barrel, one of the best barrels out there. Oh, yeah, um, sure. And then to, you know, complement the barrel, we have a Surefire. Three prong. Three prong flash hider, which is very important when you do night vision because flash when, mitigation. When, when you're shooting, your your night vision uh, will pick that thing up and will blow it back in your face. So having a good flash mitigation system. Uh, the only thing about this whole entire build is I would probably pull this off and run. Suppressor. I run a suppressor that does good flash mitigation. So not the dead air. Wow. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and say Shock. it. Now we did get the- um, We did get the, the different ink cap. Yeah, and and, and and results are pending. Yeah, results are pending. We can get it to flash sometimes. It, it's 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 inconsistent, uh, but that's the only thing I would change about it. But the the flash suppression on this works Pretty really good. really good. We were we were talking about it last night um, when we were shooting it. I mean, so far so good. So far so good. Moving back, we have a completely builded system for an upper and lower. Beautiful. The the lower on the the American Defense is one of the best lowers. It just looks good. Uh, well, not only does it look good, it has complete ambi controls that are not obnoxious and do not get in the way. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it's just a it's great like system. It's like aftermarket ones you slap in there that- Yeah, it's built into lower. Headache. Yeah, like yeah, this is all made in the lower and it's not gonna snag on your gear as bad as the aftermarket ones. Yeah, and it's 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 like, like Coleman said, it's very flush, very smooth, very well designed, mm -hmm. I would think. Very well thought uh, out. And then, you know- It's dirty. Yeah, it's Hold, dirty. It doesn't feel- It's all metal. You don't feel like you're gonna break it by using it. Yeah, you know, that's one of the great things. And you might be like, well, you can just buy a bad lever. Well, a bad lever sticks down to your trigger guard yeah, and gets in the catch way. It. Yeah. So having complete integration is really nice. Is it 100% necessary? No, no. but- that, but, but that could be a make uh, whether or not you buy it to some people. Yeah, exactly. If you are a left-handed shooter, if you are a southpaw, yeah, you would like this. I, I did find it very uh, beneficial last night when we were shooting off, off the left side of the barricade. Um, I was I was using for the first time in a long time the the ambi safeties. It's like wow, 
Yeah, it's like it's so it's so beneficial. Not used to something. I, I don't have ambi safeties on hardly any of my guns except for this one. So I was like, wow, it's so nice to be able to to use it. Yeah, and then also to complement the lower is a Geisley trigger, which mm -hmm. is one of the best triggers out on the market right now. Um, Hard to beat. Moving back up to the upper, just a radiant charging handle, and then the uh, the buffer system and the castle nut and everything uh, is an American defense buffer system. Nothing insane about it. it stock. It's 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 a really nice, great, great build. And we have had zero issues out of it. We've shot it probably five, six, seven hundred rounds at this point. It's extremely we, sturdy. It's extremely sturdy. And I mean just does its job. Does its job great. So we, we, we hope to make it a mainstay. We have to use it as a base for other builds in the future. Um, bouncing between things as you as you can see, originally we had run the Venom for the first video we did with the American Defense. This time we are running the AEMS from Hollow Sun, the op mod version, and we are complementing it with an American Defense quick, detan quick detach mount. So the reason we went with this is because I am a big fan of being able to use your optic for uh, when, you know, you're night vision. when you're doing night vision. Now you can get LPVOs that are, you know, uh, compatible with night vision. I don't like having to to deal with how you line it up because yeah it can get because because when you we, we, yeah because when you're when you have your nods on and they're down right it's already weird enough like you have to getting your, your way back yeah you're you're messing with how far back or forward your head is and I'm I'm just not a fan of doing that so I'm a way bigger fan of running either holographics or or prism or, prism or, or something right with pretty much unlimited eye relief yeah, yeah. Is, is how I like to set up my night vision shooting. And we went with the Hollow Sun one because we had never really messed with the AEMS before. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to get it out. We wanted to shoot it. We wanted to test it out and try it. And we were a big, a big fan of it. I like it a lot. It has solar integration. It has the built-in Cap. caps here, which are really nice. They're super sturdy. You're not gonna break in bad. No, way. you're not. Unless you're trying to. And they they clip on very very audible click. Uh, it has multiple reticle features, mm -hmm. which nice. is really nice. Um, the the standard or default ones kind of more like an EOTech, mm -hmm. uh, which it has the dot. With and the this, outer ring. Yeah, with the outer ring. But I like to run just the dot. That's it's just a little a, less busy. I agree. Like, let's, on most optics, the less busy the better to a degree. Yeah. It also just kind of depends on the application. For night vision, just a dot is kind of all you really need. Yeah, and it's, it's a two MOA dot, super crisp, super clean. I mean, it's it's really just a, a really nice optic. Of course, you also end up paying for it. So the optic does run about 400 bucks, which is a higher end red dot. You know, a lot of the red dots, you can buy in NVG red dots for like 150 yeah. to $200, give or take on the lower end. So this is this is double the cost of maybe like a Sig Romeo 5, yeah. which we're really big fans of, or like a, a cheaper hollow stuff. And uh, this one is a little bit higher for running night vision, so it's a little bit higher off the... Well, off yeah, the and that and that's partly... Partly because of the mount. Yeah, partly because of the uh, American Defense mount. It's nice. It's not as high as like maybe a... Uh, a scale, primary, yeah, primary arms with the, with the riser, or like the scalar works that I have for the yeah. T2, mm -hmm. which is a really high, high mount, and it brings it up to like it's a one nine, three or something yeah. like that. But this works, this does well. Uh, the solar capability, and then it also auto adjusts for, for the your brightness for your brightness, which, which nice. you know, one of the things that you found out can be, you know, it can be good and bad. Uh, if you, depends on how you're transitioning between yeah. white light. If you're doing a lot of white light stuff, it can, it doesn't sense it right here because it's only being thrown out mm -hmm. there and that's then it washes out your reticle. When we did the night vision course, that's the thing I found out was the hollow sun I was running. As soon as I went to white light here, it washed it out. Like I couldn't see. And like you just, the target would be illuminated with the white light, but your dots dim down so low because of how dark it is outside, you can't see. Yeah. That was the only downside to the auto dim. But then you'd have the same problem if it wasn't auto dim. Right. Like I'd have to say, oh wait a minute, me turn the brightness up and turn on my white light. Now I can see. So like it, it just, there's com no, it just there's comes no, with the territory. It comes with the territory. There's no good way to really get around it, I guess. And I mean, honestly, if you're white lighting at 10 yards, do you really you just need, shoot you, where the do white you, light is? Do you really need <laughs> yeah. the dot at that point? I mean, honestly, let, I mean. Yeah, I guess it depends. It really depends on the application. Yeah, and what you're shooting at. You yeah. Know? If there's a whole field full of commies out there, then you'd be all right. That's but, right. Okay. But if you're if you have to take a little bit more precision shooting, 
and then you're and, gonna need to die. Yeah, but. you're gonna need to die. We digress. Yeah, anyway. All right, moving, moving forward past this, um, what did we say? It was 400 bucks. The American Defense mounts another 150 or so. Uh, don't quote me on the price on that one. Hunter will pop it up down below. Hunter, do research. So the meat and potatoes of this build is up here on the front. And this is what really sets it apart from a typical rifle setup that we have. The table's wobbling. Uh, this is our IR Illuminator laser. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, actually, there's no illumination on this one. This is our IR laser. There we go. Uh, this is a Hollow Sun LE221. G for green oh, for green laser. Oh man. Yeah, this thing runs about 850 MSRP. You could probably get it less than that. Uh, big thank you to Optics Planet. Make sure to go check them out. They helped us out with this whole entire video. Use code DELP to save you 7% off. Do and then if you want to find this build, you can go to the website. I forgot to, I forgot to plug that this build is on the yeah, website. It's actually on the website. Hey, wait, hey, we're going to have it, ain't we? We've got yep, it. Yep. Uh, any, anywho, so the meat and potatoes of this build is the Hollow Sun um, laser up here on the, on the top. And I like this one a lot. Hollow Sun has a wide variety of laser combos. Some of them have uh, light integration um, where they have like a white light and then IR throw. Uh, this one, we didn't go with that because of the next part of the build. Um, but but the laser is really nice. It has four different settings. So it has a low vis laser, uh, which is green. And then it has a low, low power IR laser, which is really nice. And then if you want to bump it up and do high uh, for, for those for both of them, which is nice, which which is nice. Yeah. So it has half MOA adjustments. We actually just have it. Uh, oh, gosh, it's not parallel zeroed. What is it? Converging. Conver converging. We actually have a converging zero on this at 50 yards. Um, we're not doing much shooting past that for, for what we're doing around here. Yeah. That's what we chose. We we did we did parallel zeros for the course. We didn't feel like taking the time to uh, to do that this time, but uh, it worked. It worked fine. And adjusting the laser went really well. Laser holds zero. You would expect mm -hmm. that for like a nine hundred dollar laser. It should hold up. Yeah, it, it should. You mm -hmm. know, if you're spending nine hundred. We've bucks. already beat it up. And, and well, just a little bit. Oh gosh, it's also already turning colors here on the front where we're shooting it. Yeah. Golly, that's the benefit of suppressor. You get to keep your gear in the same color. Doesn't have any carbon <laughs> gear uh, build up, but it, it runs on a CR123 battery. Common. Common, really easy to adjust. They they made it simple minded ready, so they tell you right show here. Show you what's in the pile. Yeah, the they, the, yeah, which is, believe it or not, that's a, a rare commodity. That's nice. Yeah, 50 50 shot. Yeah, you have a 50 50 shot. Um, on the back, it does have the ability to be wired and connected to a pressure that's system. Fair. We're relatively poor so we don't have a brand new pressure system here to integrate with yeah. with our light we might be working on that um but being able to clear being able to just reach up here and hit it is not it, that it, it's, it, not it, it's not that big of a deal i mean i come off right here and just go pow you're back on it back on it um so it's not really something that i stress too much about pressure system would be convenient. Pressure system would be convenient, but it's not ultimately necessary. So one of the things I like about it, if you are, oh gosh, <laughs> you can get, quick detach. it's able to just quick detach, which is really nice. It has a really nice quick detach mount, integrated sturdy. really nice, sturdy. Doesn't feel very cheap. No. Mm -mm. Which it, is, it looks real clean. It does look real quick. That it's is not, one thing I like. Bulky it's either. small. Oh, I was going to say, where's the pec? Um, it is so small. That's. You know, looking at the photo online and then looking at this one, it's like, wow. So that, that's one of the things I like about it. It doesn't take up a lot of real estate. And, you know, when you're when you're talking about guns like this and you're doing a lot of night vision shooting, um, the ability to keep something lighter weight mm -hmm. and, well, that's that's, that's that's in general, you know. Yeah, you, you lightweight wanna, and compact. Lightweight and compact. So the Hollow Sun has done pretty good for, you know, a Chinese laser. Woo. Woo, 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 woo. All right, finally. Last things last. Last things last. We are running a Surefire 640 V. Oh boy, Scout Light. Scout Light. <laughs> wow. Uh, I think it's air quotes, the vampire. So this is an IR and white light capable light. I tell you the IR throw on that thing, mm -hmm. it, will, it will light everything up. Um, the switch between it is super simple. You just rotate the head on the laser or the light and it adjusts between white light and IR. The throw's great on it. Um, it will, it'll light up the whole entire night. That sounded so corny. Anyway, the only thing I don't really like about it 
is the mount. Is the mount. That's the mount that came with it. I'm about set on adjusting it. Um, I don't, it's, it's, I need to tighten it tighten down. Tighten it. Just you can tighten it, it right just here. Just it all the way down. Yeah. Keep from flopping. It's Keep, nice to have that, you know, if you need to, you know, depending on what suppressor you're running and what your laser well, is. Well, yeah, that's, nice that's the thing is if you need to adjust it, um, I, I think it's just not tight enough. Well, I'm saying like, it's nice that it has that range of motion, depending on what all you're running up here. You can just mm -hmm. move it around what you need and then tighten, tighten well, it Well, like with a peck or maybe like. Or you, how your M-lock is set up. Yeah. Like. It is nice to have that range of motion, but once you get it where you want it, just tighten it down. Crap it. Yeah, but I mean, it's been a really great light. It's super easy to adjust, super easy to hit. And it's ego stroker. Yeah, it is the ego stroker. Well, that the whole build's kind of an ego stroker. It's kind of expensive. Just a little bit. You know? In terms of what we typically do, it is a little pricier. Yeah. What do you, let, let's, let's add up the MSRP. Sparky, do you have your mental notepad right here? All right. Sure. 220 or 2,200. All right, 22. 400. 26. Let's say another 150. 2750. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> I had to think about it. 900. Or let's say 800. 2750 plus 800. 35. 35. 50. <laughs> I was like, I was homeschooled. Right. Leave me alone. 450. 450. What did I say? 35.50. Oh, four grand. Four grand. <laughs> four Easy, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Golly. Oh, man, wait, wait, wait. All right, so this whole bill costs about $4,000. Um, it could get so much worse than this in terms what? of oh yeah, of night vision stuff. Um, so that's why I didn't want to really go in to say this is the high-end bill because we could definitely do more expensive. Oh, for sure. Um, the laser system on it could be double, triple. I mean, if you get like a peck or a mall or D ball, D ball. Yeah. Well, I don't know if a D ball is more than a thousand bucks, but the pecks and the malls yeah. are like two, three, uh, depending on which one you get. You could definitely throw a lot more money at this. You could throw a lot more money on it. You could get a uh, aim point T2 with a hundred dollar mount. So you're sitting at a thousand dollars for an optic right there. Yep. And I guess you could bump up the, uh, the, the rail system. Well, not the rail system, but the firearm. You could get like a three or $4,000 AR-15 if you were feeling absolutely insane. But I think this is a very, very nice night vision build. If you're wanting uh, to do more night vision. Yeah, if you're a more, uh, I guess, dedicated night vision shooter and you wanted to get a little bit more serious with your setup, mm -hmm. you wanted to spend a little bit more, you wanted to have a little bit nicer stuff. So if you can beat up and trust a little bit more. Yeah, and then, but you know, if you're if you're balling on a budget, by all means, go get the Somo gear and go get a PSA and you know, run it. have fun, run it, get good with it. But if you wanna get, you know, a little bit more serious, you wanna have a little bit uh, more confidence in your gear, like a lot of the Somo gear reviews that have came out have been mixed mm -hmm. you know some people are saying they're you know a 200 dollar peck knockoff that works and some people are saying they're garbage um we have yet to release a video on it just because you know the opinion's very much up in the air yeah the opinion's very much up in the air we did break some of it i yeah. didn't melt the uh, pressure pad on it Whip. um so this completely different this gets getting your toes wet into the little bit nicer stuff yeah, exactly. And I would say that's the, the reason to buy this. And mm -hmm. now if you are using digital night vision and you don't want to s spend too much into it, you can get a night vision setup for, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks. Um, but, but if you want to really get into it and, you know, start training and, you know, becoming, I guess, a little more, more, more serious about yeah. it, that's, that's who I would recommend this for. I'm not saying you can't do it on a budget, uh, but that's, where this build kind of sits in the gun safe. To caveat all of this, we were doing our shooting and training with Armasite. Um, I run the BMVD 51s, which have been really nice so far. Sparky's running a PVS 14 and a thermal. thermal combo. We're testing that out. Video will probably be out soon on that. Um, kind of what are the applications for mm -hmm. that. So, so make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for the future. We're also gonna do some comparisons between these high end uh, night vision and then like more budget. digital budget night vision. So you stay tuned for all that because we have a lot of night vision stuff coming and we're really excited to talk about it. Hey, is there anything you wanted to, add, after running this for a little bit, is there anything you want to add to it, change about it? I wouldn't change anything about it. Maybe a little bit higher amount, uh, but that's about it. What would you do? Anything? Uh, I'd tighten down the light, that's a small issue. Suppressor probably would help. Um, and if you are big on using your optic through your 
night vision, then yes, a higher mount would be nice or just use your laser. I'm a big fan of laser, but people are saying, you know, with, with how, you know, it, it's funny because you don't want to be dependent on this. The, the laser dependency sucks if your bad guys have night vision. That is a good point. But if you have night vision and you're the only one with night vision, you're, I'd say use the laser all day. But also, how do you know if the bad guys have night vision? You know? Depends on how well they shoot back. I got you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's a good really point. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I would really change is a, a, you know, a suppressor and then maybe raising it, the hollow sun up a little bit. But I mean, you're talking a quarter an inch, half an inch maybe. Hey, it's a lot for some people. Yeah, sorry. But that's the only thing I would really change. All right, we're going to sign off on that. Make sure to like and subscribe, follow us on Instagram, and check out Basement Operator. We'll, we'll see you on the next one. As always, take someone outdoors. Peace. Bye. Here comes the sun. Doo-doo-doo. All right. You rolling?